Hello, BookTube. I wanted to revisit a book that we talked about briefly yesterday. I thought it deserved a spotlight of its own, especially in the context of A Tale of Two Readers. <laughs> and the book is, of course, this. It's the deluxe Lord of the Rings edition that I got yesterday with the, the gold gilt uh, lettering there and the, the die-cut cover for the Eye of Sauron. <laughs> uh, and the, uh, the stenciled elvish lettering for one one part of the uh, the ring verse on the, on the red pages there it's got the built-in cloth bookmark it's got sewn binding so it sits flat um, on the table uh, and it has all of Tolkien's own illustrations uh, all throughout he did a large number a larger number than I always remember of spot illustrations design illustrations uh, carefully written out in calligraphy editions of some of the, the famous verses in the, in the thing, enough so that you can actually have an illustrated edition, as opposed to, I don't think you would want to imagine some of the illustrated editions from other classics of the English language, because their authors didn't have any kind of artistic bent. It's a wonderful idea, long overdue, and it's a beautiful, beautiful edition. I've been living with it for the last 24 hours since I got it. Uh, and while I've been living with it, I've, I've read... Uh, uh, Shadows of the Past. I read the chapter Shadows of the Past. I read the chapter in the House of Tom Bombadil, and of course, I reread uh, the Council of Elrond, uh, which I think is one of the most masterful works of dramatic exposition anywhere in any kind of literature. I think one of its only rivals is the banquet scene in Dune. Uh, I read those again in this volume to see what it would be like, and it made me think of two readers. <laughs> one is me. And one is Mark Richardson of Richardson Reads. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have watched Mark's channel, and you know perfectly well he's not a book snob. When he's out on one of his book buying halls, if he finds a book that he just wants to read, hasn't read it in a long time, or maybe has only heard about it and hasn't read it, he doesn't really care about the shape that it's in. He's not a snob along those lines, but he does own a large number of what I call fancy books. Folio Society, Easton Press, that sort of thing. Things that are that are gorgeous in a way that sometimes disinclines you from using them as what reading people call a reading copy. Uh, I was thinking of Mark while I was living with this book, because I am not one of those people. Mark carefully graduates uh, the delicacy of how he handles a book based on the book, as you would expect from a library director, <laughs> whereas I am rough on my books, and sometimes thoughtless, and even when I'm paying attention for the whole of my reading life, I have had dogs, <laughs> and not all of them have been as sweet and controlled as Frida. Frida has no interest. When she was a puppy, when she was a brainless puppy, maybe, but as an adult, for the last five years, she has no interest in chewing on anything that she's not supposed to chew on. She has no interest in making a mess with anything, moving anything. <laughs> My basset out Lucy used to pick things up in her enormous, endless mouth, drool on them in the process, and move them. <laughs> I think the thought in her tiny little brain was to maybe play with it, but that was always too much effort, so she ended up just losing interest and dropping it two rooms away. I always used to refer to her as the world's slowest poltergeist. <laughs> and that has a, an effect on books, right? I had, I've had i had endless numbers of beagles who sometimes, well into their middle age, still like to just randomly destroy things. <laughs> and there's also hair and drool and mess. There, there, There's even bodily mess later on when dogs get older. And there's also the messes that I make, dropping things, uh, spilling things, that sort of thing. Things that, that a fancy book in, for instance, Mark Richardson's collection, they don't have to face as much of that as they do with me. And I think that's a divide right along the whole company of readers, not just between me and Mark, but a lot of you. I think some of you are very mindful of the shape and care of your books, and some of you aren't. They just aren't. Not quite so much. I believe that the, there are just two types of readers along those lines. Nothing wrong with either one of them. Uh, but I could easily understand, when I was handling this thing, for instance, first of all, I took the dust jacket off when I was doing that reading, even in bed. I took the dust jacket off. Because the dust jacket is its very nice, but it's kind of a, a matte finish off-white that is, a, I imagine, would be a magnet for smudges, fingerprints, anything. And also, the die-cut eye of Sauron, that's a great effect, uh, that, it, that it's just this the lidless eye floating in a sea of black until you put the cover on, and then all of a sudden, it's got, you know, uh, the ring verse around it. But 
die cut covers are asking for trouble <laughs> for the second kind of reader for the me kind of reader die cut co tr covers are asking for trouble they they are ready to rip they are ready to scuff and uh, along the edges along the inside edges there and if you were a me type of reader instead of a really careful type of reader you might worry about that this is not a cheap book i think right now at the moment that i'm making this video this is out of stock but it will come back into stock unlike the even fancier one quarter leather slipcase edition in bright red that that the publisher also came out with at the same time uh that's more expensive and i think is instantly collectible because i don't believe the the printing will ever match the demand i think those are they're going to be a hot property on ebay for the rest of our lives uh the, that one would be too fancy even for me especially since i have such a problem with boxes with books in box set. i love them but i tend to destroy them unless they're made perfectly sized perfectly so that as the slightest pull brings it slipping right out of the case but how many times have i encountered box sets where that's not the case at all we have to hold the thing up like that and, and bounce it up and down like that uh so i'm not i'm not talking about that extra collectible edition i don't i don't think i will ever even see that edition much less own it and i'm not sure that i want to but i did take the the dust jacket off of this thing uh, in order to read the pages that i was reading and i confess while i was doing that I was thinking, well, you know, this is a tale of two readers. Are you, you're reading it and really enjoying it. Oh my, this is such a beautiful edition. It is such a beautiful edition. I think I won't be the only person who has this edition who uh, did not use this little uh, ribbon. Instead, I used one of the maps as a bookmark. <laughs> I, know, I can't be the only person who's going to do that. If The, the maps are, are, are located right at the beginning and right at the end of the book. And I found that when you're reading the book, if the map is just sitting there in between the cover and the pages, it'll fall out. It's better to have it wedged in between the pages, for me anyway. But when I was reading it and loving it, just lo I could read this book and I could reread it endlessly. Just endless. I have reread it endlessly. But while I was using it, I was thinking, who is this for? Which of those two kinds of readers is this for? Obviously, if you are the first kind of reader, if you're the Mark Richardson kind of reader, and you, you're careful with your books. You give them the care and concern that they want. This is a lovely edition that a lot of work was put into. If you are that kind of reader and you are a Lord of the Rings fan, you have to have this. <laughs> you just have to have this. This is, objectively speaking, easily the most beautiful edition of Lord of the Rings that's ever been made. Uh, and if you are the type of reader who is careful enough to actually pull this off the shelf and use it to read, instead of just as a display item, so much the better then it becomes a no-brainer the so the, i'm not i'm not really trying to uh, to pitch here to that kind of reader the, that kind of reader will only have to question a do i need another edition of lord of the rings and b budget the money but the, whether or not it's a good idea to have the thing will not be an active question it's the other kind of reader it's the me kind of reader you, that some of you out there may be thinking well is this too fancy for me i don't want to get a beautiful book like this so i'm going to destroy it and I've been thinking about this a lot while I've been reading those chapters. I've been thinking about this a lot. And I've been cataloging in my mind what could happen. Of course, as I mentioned, the dust jacket could smudge. The die cut could rip. This lettering, well, who knows how long that will retain its, its crisp integrity as you're, as you're flipping pages, right? Who knows how long that will happen. And also, this is a very heavy book. It's a, it's a thick heavy book. I'm a little bit surprised at how compact in the hand it is. It actually fits in the hand better than I thought it would, and I bet it fits and feels better in the hand than the leather-bound edition. Uh, but nevertheless, when the book is over a thousand pages long, I have often found that the leather bookmark is in danger. <laughs> that that th just through the, the, the weird process of moving the book, nightstand, bed, chair, table, that sort of thing, sometimes when the weight of the book is so much, uh, the, the cloth bookmark can come loose i don't know that, that will happen in this case uh mainly because i don't think i'll ever use the book the cloth bookmark i think i'll use the maps instead as my bookmarks uh but while i was using it i was thinking of all those things i was thinking well you know over time attrition would make that happen and i want to make an argument <laughs> i came to a conclusion myself and i want to put the argument to you I would say that if you're a me kind of reader, not quite so delicate, not quite so mindful of the physical beauty of your books, even if you appreciate it, I would say this is still worth the investment <laughs> because it's still going to give you five years at least 
of rock solid joy and enjoyment. It's a it's a rock solid volume. The binding alone makes sure that that is true. I have paperbacks of this book that have worse binding. The, the, the paperback I, I have paperbacks of this where the binding will give out faster than this does. And yes, the that lettering will probably get a little less distinct the more you use it. But if you reread this book every year, as I do, <laughs> that's going to take a while to happen. And in the meantime, you're going to be getting the joy of owning the most beautiful edition of this book that's ever been made. So my argument would be, nothing lasts forever. <laughs> that is surely one of the larger lessons of this book itself. I would argue that even if you are careful, this is probably still a volume to have. I thought about it myself. I thought about it long and hard. One of the thoughts I had when I was living with this all last night, uh, holding it, moving it around, talking to it, <laughs> imagining that it's talking to me, <laughs> my precious. While I was doing that, I was thinking, uh, what if you didn't have any other Lord of the Rings? Would this actually survive? Would this work as the book that you have? And it would. I need to be a little bit more mindful because... That again, that die cut cover that's going to be in danger whenever you take this on or off a shelf. It's it's not a question of it just getting ripped when you're using it. It's a question of it just of of it being in danger when you're shelving it in and out. If you're mindful of that, the rest of it will take care of itself. It's it's a surprisingly sturdy volume, and it'll last you for a long time, long enough so that if you factor out the cost, I don't remember uh, what the cost of this thing is, but it's expensive. It's $60, more than that, maybe. And uh, when you factor that in, I mean, factor $60 over five years, six years, however long it's going to take you. Uh, I think it's worth it. <laughs> I think it's worth it. One of the questions that I was asking myself when I was living with this thing, I'm not done living with it, but I have to, get, I have to set it aside. I have to do that. I have to set it aside and start paying attention to new books, which is actually my job. But nevertheless, this is a new book in a way. That's how I've been rationalizing it myself. But while I've been living with it, one of the questions I've been asking myself is, uh, if the publisher had not been ge generous enough to send this to you, would you have broken down and bought it? And I think I would have. I know I said in an earlier video that maybe I wouldn't, maybe it was a little too fancy for my blood, but you could tell even in those videos I was wavering. I think I would have. It's the kind of volume, the kind of addition of a work that you love that you really don't want to let go. You want to let it go by, and you don't want to wait 10 years for it to come down to $10 in price on eBay or something like that. So that's just another, another spotlight for a book here, just in case any of you wanted more details about this thing. It is gorgeous and sturdy and really, really entertaining. Just when you think it's been too long and you really need another one of those understated, graceful, very English illustrations, you get one. Uh, they're perfectly paced throughout here. So... <laughs> it's just another spotlight on this book. I just want I know a lot of you wanted to see more of it and I want to talk about it more. But now that I've given you the breakdown, a tale of two readers, whichever kind of reader you are, I think this is a good investment of money. Uh, but now that I've done the breakdown of the tale of two readers, uh, I'm going to put this book away. I'm going to put it in an envelope on the mantelpiece in Hobbiton <laughs> because I have other things to pay attention to. <laughs> but I'm going to wrap this up and I will be back. Thank you, book two.